Hi, I'm Jeff Munn. I'm on the board of RFL. I'm also uh, a coach with the Academy and I'm a full-time executive coach here in the Valley. Um, Andrea asked me to talk to you today about the concept of expectations versus accountability. And I think I want to start with a story uh, that one of my coaches told me and that I now use with many of my clients. And it's about the distinction between expectations and agreements. Um, many of the um, problems that we have in our day-to-day -day life, whether they're at work or in relationship, are because we thought we had an agreement, but what we really had was an expectation. And so if, um, if I'm working with you, or if I am parenting my teenager, or if I am in relationship with someone, um, I may have an expectation of how and when they're going to do a particular thing that I have not communicated to them. And so, for example, I may want my teenager to show up uh, at 10 o'clock and the teenager shows up at 11 o'clock and then we have a fight. Well, certainly he should have known that curfew was at 10 o'clock, right? Well, maybe he didn't because we may not have had an agreement that when he left the house, that he would be home by 11 o'clock. If we had gone to the level of an agreement instead of an expectation, we would have made this um, set of expectations that I had in my mind and that he had in his mind explicit. We could have negotiated. We could have come to some level of formal agreement on the things that were important to each of us. So for me, it would be, you know, drive safe, uh, follow the rules of the road, um, be home by 11 o'clock, uh, don't have anything to drink, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's going to be a little bit different in every situation, but we can make the things that we believe are the most important um, explicit and each party can do that. So you have this agreement up front. A lot of times we put those agreements in writing. We can call them agreements or if we really want to be formal about it, we can call it a contract. And we can look after the fact and say, okay, we said this uh, report was going to be uh, available to me by 9 a.m. on Friday. It got here at 9.30. Uh, we said the report would have these elements of data in it. It has these elements. It has these additional elements, but it's missing these elements. On down the line, and when we make this distinction between expectations and agreements, what we end up doing is having a lot of conversations that, that may be difficult, but save so much time if we have them up front over, uh, instead of after the fact. And it also saves a lot of frustration and resentment and finger pointing and I can't believe you didn't know that blah, 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 blah. I mean, how many times do we get in that situation where we really think that the other person should have been able to read our mind? And of course, everybody knows that a report on XYZ includes A, B, and C. Well, not everybody does know that because you just had a person deliver that report to you that didn't include those things. So if we can have that uh, agreement up front, it saves us a lot. Now, if we add on the, the concept of accountability, to me, I am agreeing to be accountable for something if there is an agreement on it. I can't be accountable unless I agree to be accountable. So to me, that's just one additional layer of this notion of expectations and agreements. So if we have expectations, we should make them into an agreement to make sure that both sides uh, are clear on what uh, is actually going to happen in a particular transaction. And then we can each be accountable for the things that we are responsible for. So you may be asking for help in a particular way. I am accountable for giving you that help. You may be uh, promising to deliver a report that has certain elements and you are agreeing to be accountable for that. So that's the way that I'm seeing how these things all relate. And I hope that is helpful to you. Uh, thanks so very much. I'll see you next time.